half of my video and not noticing until later when I was discussing it with my friend and her being like, oh, I didn't see that part of the video. Oh, I didn't see that part of the video. And then me being like, oh my God, it's eight minutes and I have like a 20 minute video that was supposed to be uploaded. So we're doing good. Anyway, I've been super busy. A lot has happened. Um, hopefully I'll have another video soon. Speaking of the lot that has happened, she just jumped on the freaking laptop. This is Clam. Clam is my new baby. Anyway, you guys will meet more of her later. Um, yeah, so enjoy this video and hopefully I'll have another one soon. I'm a mess. <laughs> Seriously, look at this spread. We have the tangerines. That right there is pomelo, which is, I'm obs obsessed with pomelo. And then we have goat cheese and these crackers. I think they're called like Firestone crackers. I just absolutely love these crackers. They're my favorite, 10 out of 10. I get them at Whole Foods. And then a delicious honey drizzled pancake. So yum. Yay! This is what I mean, like it's, it's so hard to get it. <laughs> yeah, like framed correctly. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, hello, so we went to Riff Raff yesterday. Sorry to block your whole face. Um, and I spent so much money that they gave me a free tote bag. So not really free, I suppose. Do you want to start with the book? Yeah, so got? this is a last minute book. I'm sorry. I purchased one, two, three, four, five. So she got five books and she was like $20 away from a free tote bag. So we added this on. This is for me. It's called One Friday in April by Donald Anthrim, and it's um, Antrim, and it's it's a biography about his struggle with mental health. Looking forward to reading it. It's very short. I had started reading it in Riff Raff, thinking I was going to finish it, but then we ended up. Uh, I was speedier than you thought I'd be. She was very speedy, yeah. So <laughs> now it's home with me. And so, my small whoop. I also picked this up. I don't know if they were free, but I did just pick it up, so. What does it mean? No plot for the wicked. Maybe like evil people, they never get to be the storyline. They never get to have that redemption arc, that story about them. I just thought it was cute and I could put it on my wall or use it as a bookmark. Tiki. But yes, my little haul. I've seen several books by Yan Liang Ke, and so I've been wanting to pick up something and I also absolutely always adore the art. This just like fascinating, like, like I don't know, like prop pop. So it's realism style. I don't know if that's how, I feel bad because I'm always covering your face when I'm showing yeah. something. I just love that style so much of art. And so I've, wanted, I've been wanting to pick up something and I thought that this had like the darkness that I of course love. Um, and it's, you know, based in, uh, in China, revolutionary China. At least I think it's based in, I don't think, I think it's like post-revolution China. Um, but the, the back of the book reads, an operatic, comic, and brilliantly plotted novel of human drama and corrupting power, hard like water, follows Gao Ai Jun and Xia Hongmei, uh, two communist revolutionaries, so it is revolution, he he he, um, <laughs> whose <laughs> sheer passion for the party compels them to fall desperately in love with each other, an adulterous secret um, they must hide from their families and neighbors in their backwa backwater village. Yet, when their torrid relationship is finally discovered, their dreams of a bright future together begin to fray. Will their great revolutionary energy save their skins, or will they fall too, or, they, or will they too fall victim to the revolution that is swallowing up the country? Ah, oh, just the darkness, the romance, but danger. That's what I like. I like it when it sounds like it might have a sad ending. That's what this sounds like to me. 
Yes, of course, of course. Of course, obviously, before any of these were purchased, they smell had to check. be smelled. Mm -hmm. There's the vibe check, and then there's the smell check, and they, they have to Pass fall both. in line. Yeah. <laughs> then we have... Um, okay, so the, the title of this is very interesting because it says, A Present Past, Titan and Other Chronicles by Sergei um, uh, Lebedev. Lebedev? I never know. I think it would be Lebedev because that's like swan. Because Lebedev is a swan. That's what it means in Russian or Ukrainian? Russian. Russian. Gotcha. Um, this is the one that you looked up the author's? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what she's referring to is I did like look up to make sure that uh, uh, the author is like pro-Ukraine, which is something that I always do with um, any Russian writer that I'm going to read um, and it's interesting so the reason why the title is so confusing is because when it was originally published in Russian it was called like Titan um, and so the naming is weird and the back of this is uh, the Soviet and post-Soviet world with its untold multitudes of crimes is a natural breeding ground for ghost stories no one writes them more movingly than Russian author Sergei Lebedev uh, who in this stunning volume probes a collective guilty conscience marked by otherworldliness and a denial of misdeeds. Uh, these eleven share a, these eleven tales share a mystical topography in which the legacy of totalitarian regime is ever present. From Garten to Chechnya, from Lithuanian uh, KGB documents to the streetscape of unified Berlin from the fragments of family history to the echoes of foot soldiers in Russia's wars of aggression. In these stories, as, as in Lebedev's acclaimed novels, the voices of past, the voices of things, places, animals, and people seek justice from a relentless past where steel claws scraped the surface. Oh my god, I am so bad at reading out loud where steel claws scrape just beneath the surface and where the hereditary of evil is uninterrupted unacknowledged and unnamed i smell yes of course Thank you. then another russian author um for like the ones of the past who knows right i'm not necessarily looking up the, the in-depths of their views, I think for contemporary authors, it's, it's what I'm doing, but obviously there are like people in the Soviet Russian past which were also had like bad views towards Ukraine, so I don't want to say that they didn't, but I just think for contemporary authors it's a little more relevant. Um, and this is Summer in Baden-Baden by Leonid uh, Tsipkin, and he was a Russian Jewish writer um, in Minsk, and he actually never published anything whilst living. It was all published after his death. And this takes a look. I don't even. I don't know. Reading the back of this feels like it would be a lot, don't you think? It's a lot of words. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'll just. I'll say this is what I won't read the back for. But I think it's supposed to be kind of like a hint, hint, wink, wink about um, a Fyodor Dostoevsky, who is a um, gambling. Get a man of gambling who has a literary vocation. What could this be about? Who could this be about? <laughs> we don't know. So, yeah. Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry. sorry. I, I forgot. I forgot. Ugreshechik. I think it's Ugreshechik. Ugresek. This is shh. This is shh. Ugreshechik. No, uh, Yugoslavian. Oh, okay. Go for okay. It. Okay. Uh, okay, so, Enazirwan is the Museum of Unconditional Surrender by Dubravka Ugrashechik. And this one I picked up, actually, last time I was at Riff Raft, I also got another book by her, um, uh, Babu Yaga. Not okay. pronounced Baba Yaga, fun fact. Yes, I demand, because she is friends with me, she has to pronounce it Baba Yaga, Baba not Yaga. Baba Yaga. Oh. <laughs> what is it called? Because it's definitely, that's definitely not the complete name. It's definitely like something, something. Oh, Baba Yaga laid an egg. That's what it's called. I love that book. I need to like absolutely yeah. have the name memorized. So I decided to pick another one up. Um, this one, I think the back is very funny, so I will read it. 
After receiving glowing, review, glowing reviews nationwide, the Museum of Unconditional Surrender by the renowned Yugoslavian writer Dubravko Grašečić is now available as a paperback. The novel begins in the Berlin Zoo with the contents of Roland the wal walrus's stomach displayed by his pool. Roland died in August of 1961. These objects, a cigarette lighter, lollipop sticks, a beer bottle opener, etc., like the fictional pieces of the novel itself, are seemingly random at first, but eventually coalesce meaningfully and poetically. Written in a variety of literary forms, the Museum of Unconditional Surrender captures the shattered world of life in exile. It addresses the themes of art and history, aging and loss, and is a haunting and extremely original novel. In the words of a London Times Literary Supplement, it is vivid in its denunciation of destructive forces and in its evocation of what is at stake. That's so many words <laughs> to describe the, like a book. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's so like, and this, and comma, <laughs> and indeed the evocation of the literary meanings and mm -hmm. <laughs> i get it they have to describe like they have to get you to want to read the book in like a paragraph but it's so ooh. and last but not least we have beijing by xu zhe chen this one was also kind of last minute right this one was very last minute it's also called beijing sprawl i forgot sprawl because beijing sp sprawling <laughs> you get it, you get it, you get it. They get it. This one was last minute because I kind of walked past it and then it was one of those books that has like a little like descriptor on the side and I thought the descriptor was amazing so I actually haven't read like the, the flap on the inside. So that was like a riffraff employee recommended it, right? And then they wrote down why they recommended the book. Yeah, which okay. they started doing in like Barnes and Nobles as well, I've really noticed. Seen that. Yeah, so. I think, I, which I think is very good because sometimes like you do read a book and it's quite unassuming mm -hmm. and so it's just nice to have like a, someone else like, OMG, loved it, XOXO Gossip Girl. Um, Mu Yu, a 17-year-old from a small village, came to Beijing for his piece of the dream, money, love, a good life. But in the city, daily life for him and his friends, purveyors of fake IDs and counterfeit papers is a precarious balance of struggle and guile. Surveying the neighborhood from the rooftop of the apartment they all share, the young men play cards, drink beer, and discuss their aspirations, hoping for the best, but expe expecting little more than the comfort of each other's company. In these connected stories, translated from Chinese by Eric Abrahamson and Jeremy Tiang, Xu's characters observe as others like them, workers, students, drifters, and just the plain unlucky, get by the best ways they know how. By jogging excessively, herding pigeons, oh, <laughs> herding pigeons, <laughs> building cars from scraps, and holding their friends close, through the miasma of so-called progress. I love when the word miasma is used to describe something. <laughs> like it's such a good word. Like it's like said it didn't really work out for germ theory, but it's, it's a great word. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so which one are you gonna read first? So this is a very interesting. I think that on one hand, I might wanna read like a short story collection. So I'm kind of like leaning towards Beijing sprawl, mm -hmm. but also I feel like a present past sounds this one? Yeah, they all sound really good. I think more or less last, I'll probably read The Museum of Unconditional Surrender because it's like, I, I'm i very confident I'll like it just how much I liked her previous work. Yeah. Um, And so I, I think it kind of be exciting to maybe test something else and leave the thing that, like leave the dessert for the end, if that makes sense. Right. Among your other to be read books. Oh Lord. Yeah. Oh Lord. <laughs> so many. Awesome. Well, yes, we will continue this once we are in the museum? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Museum. Cheers. All right. Bye.
so what are we trying so we went to like a novelty shop and we got these freeze-dried candies is that what a novelty shop is i feel like it is i feel okay. like it had like bits and bobs it had like cleaning it had like a scrub daddy and then like manga and jade ro roller and jade rollers yeah. and slippers mm -hmm. and candy it had prime the logan paul thing but i've heard that these freeze-dried candies are very popular so i wanted to try them because i love sour gummy worms um, just want to see so bon appetit i said bon appetit <laughs> just eat the candy I know it's whatever. I, I could decide between actually bon appetit and bone and apple tea. Yeah. Is it, is it tough to eat? I got these. So the sourness is gone. <laughs> <laughs> it is much harder to eat. And, um,. It tastes more bubble gummy than a regular gummy worm. And it doesn't have the um, acidity. Mm -mm. Mine tastes like a steel marshmallow. I'm trying yours. Mm -hmm. Try mine. No. Okay. And these are rainbow marshmallow rolls. I wonder like the legalities of this because this is very clearly like the trolley gummy worms. Mm -hmm. So it's like, are they allowed to just like rebrand it as their own? Yeah, like sell something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, Thoughts on the flavor. I think because the um, it's just vanilla. It's much more mild. Mm -hmm. Like I actually did not like the flavor of these, which was the problem. So I feel like I like the flavor of gummy worms. Like these are actually like flavor-wise good. That makes sense to me. Don't get these. If you're gonna get them, don't because it'll get these. F up your teeth, but get these instead of these. Mm -hmm. Some of you may know that whenever I purchase Russian books or books by Russian authors, I donate an equivalent amount to a charity that supports Ukraine. In this case, I donated to United Ukrainian American Relief Committee. They support Ukrainians around the world, especially people who are fleeing from the full-scale invasion. I'll include their link below. Um, I not only do this, but I make sure that any contemporary Russian writers that I am supporting with my money, that they are in opposition to the full-scale invasion and they are not supporting it themselves. I think this is just part of what we can do to support Ukraine on our end and also support a better Russia.